And hello, it's uh, Faye Morgana, and I'm about to do my Duolingo lesson. Uh, oops, wrong course. This is the Russian one. I'm going to switch over to the Russian for Spanish speakers course. And um, okay, so I was on profession and in second, I'll be right back. And my apologies, I'm boiling chicken for my cat. Okay, profession, empezar. Muy часто говорим о волейболе. We often, uh, we, we trust, I think, is often говорим, talk, oh, volleyball. Oh, volleyball. Muy часто говорим о волейболе. Волейболе. Okay, so, um, <coughs> often, a menudo, or frequently, um, говорим. What? Uh, Nosotros, oh yeah, a menudo, a menudo hablamos sobre el volleyball. A menudo hablamos, hablamos sobre el volleyball. Моя тетя очень интересуется волейболом. I remember uh, in me tia sta interesada ya yeah, interesada in a volleyball okay. in a volleyball uh, oh I forgot ocean well that's not very good Next. I'm not paying attention, am I? Dogavarilis. Dogavarilis. Well, I don't know that one. Dogavarilis. Trata acho? <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. Oops. Dogavarilis. Trato acho. So if they're me. I'm not sure what that means, actually. Ah, done deal. Agreed. Okay. Dogavarilis. Мы часто говорим о волейболе. Um, a menudo hablamos sobre el volleyball. Нет, я не интересуюсь футболом. Я не интересуюсь. I'm not interested in football. No. No, no. Estoy interesado in el football. No. No. Me interesa. 
They want that one this time. Interessuish. In, oh, football. Interessuish. Um, between the Spanish, estoy interesada, estoy interesado, I'm interested, versus me interesa. I think it means the same thing, but what's the difference? Because uh, uh, with the me interesa, um, it would be interesarse. Interesarse, right? To interest. Esto uh, interesado. Not sure what the difference is between the two. Oh, because this is more of football doesn't interest me, and the other one is it. I'm not interested in her. Okay, try that again. That's why I was just saying I don't understand quite the difference except for. Guess it's just. Нет, я не интересуюсь футболом. Guess it would be just the same kind of context as in English. You could say it either way. I'm not interested in football, or you can say football doesn't interest me. So no me interesa. El football is football doesn't interest me. Uh, no estoy interesada en el football is I'm not interested in football. Нет, я не интересуюсь футболом. Интересуюсь. Интересуюсь. No me interesa el football. So this is the one they want this time. Моя тетя очень интересуется волейболом. So this one they're saying my aunt is very interested. Me. Tia. Uh, está muy interesada en el volleyball. Хосе интересуется футболом и волейболом много лет. 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 I can't remember now. No. Ah, this one's complicated. Let me hear this again. Хосе интересуется футболом и волейболом много лет. So yeah, he's saying Хосе. 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 Хосе интересуется футболом и волейболом много лет. Интересуется. Хосе. Интересуется футболом и волейболом много лет. Лет. Хосе интересуется футболом и волейболом много лет. Interesuza foot pollen, interesuza foot pollen, e 
So I got this right. So I left out Jose, Jose, in int to this su yet sa foot bottom e. Okay, so Jose to Res su et sa yeah, this one volleyball volley and net oops Uh, the Spanish is Jose se ha interesado por el fútbol y el voleibol por muchos años. So, yeah. So, uh, because you know what? The Russian is using the reflexive. They want you to use the reflexive. Se interesare. Interesado. Я уже с ним договорился. Um, уже, я уже um, я с ним Я уже с ним договорился. Я коре конем. Я коре кон. Um, yeah, I think that's right. Мы часто говорим о волейболе. Um, часто. А минуру обламус собре о волейбол. Я уже с ним договорился. Договорился. Я уже с ним говорился. Говорил. Я же с ним договорился. Договорились. 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 Why wouldn't they say de acuerdo? I guess that, that means something else. De acuerdo. In agreement, right? Why not the acuerdo? Вам понравится хозяин. Он приятный человек. Вам понравится. Okay, вам. Вам. Yeah. вам понравится. Okay, this is another reflexive in Russian. Понравится. Понравится. Uh, oh yeah. Вам I понравится. Стара. Хозяин. Он. Он приятный человек. Okay, let's try this. А устает. Понравится, хозяин. Um. Ле кастара. Понравится, хозяин. Понравится, хозяин. El dueño. El dueño is owner. Yeah. Он, L, S. Приятный человек. Una persona. Agradable. Okay, so um instead le gustara el dueño el es una persona agradable. Code okay. Muy chasta gavarima volibole. Мы часто говорим о волейболе. Мы часто говорим о волейболе. Next. Приятно познакомиться. 
Познакомиться. Well, it means Приятно. nice to meet you, but I'm pretty sure. Познакомиться. Mucho Приятно. gusto means nice to meet you, but I'm not sure if they'll take it. Yeah, they want this one. Познакомиться. Encantado de con no serte. Приятно. Познакомиться. Um, I think you could say encantada de con serte if you're if you're female. I'm worried they might not accept the answer. Oh, good, they did. Я познакомился с хозяином дома год назад. So, okay, I. Oh, I know. Knows. Oh, yeah, познакомился. Milsia is. Okay, that's the past tense, is right. Conosci. Conosci el dueño. Okay. Conosci el dueño. De la casa. De la casa hace un. Okay, so I've known the owner of the house for a year. No sé. Al dueño de la casa hace un año. Моя тетя очень интересуется волейболом. Моя тетя очень интересуется 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 um, okay. моя тетя очень интересуется волейболом Next. нам нужно договориться с хозяином квартиры нам нужно договориться с хозяином квартиры Нужно. Нам нужно. Он договорится. Договорится. А негосиар. Хозяином. С. Хозяином. 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 Квартиры. Necesitamos negociar con el dueño del apartamento. Okay. Okay. My laptop is, is hopefully charging now. Yeah. <laughs> Necesitamos negociar con el dueño. Nam nujna. Da kavaritsa. Hosanum kateri. I want to hear this one again. Nam nujna da kavaritsa s hazeinum kvartiri. Нам нужно договориться с хозяином. This is one that's tricky for me. Квартире. This one. С хозяином. С ха. С хозяином. That's a new word for me. Хозяином. 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 Хозяин. Хозяином. 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 Это с квартиры. 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 Было очень приятно познакомиться с писателем. Было очень приятно познакомиться с писателем. Познакомиться с писателем. Было очень приятно познакомиться с писателем. Было очень приятно познакомиться с писателем. 
fue un placer conocer al escritor. Uh, there was what does that mean actually? <laughs> the pleasure fue un placer. Oh, placer conocer al escritor. It was pleasure meeting the writer. Uh, uh, Bila Ochen Priyatna Bila Ochen Priyatna Pozna Kom Nitsya Spazati Priyatna Ochen Bila Ochen Priyatna Bila Ochen No Bila Ochen Pozna Kamitsa Pozna Kamitsa Pozna Kamitsa Pozna Kamitsa <laughs> That's not right It's this one And we said this one earlier. Было очень приятно познакомиться с писателем. Я познакомился с хозяином дома год назад. С хозяином дома год назад. Я познакомился с хозяином дома год назад. Я познакомился с хозяином дома год. Whatever. Hosanum. Ya posna commit Ya posna commits us Hosan Doma God Nazad. Next. Um Tarato it uh was this one. The Govarilsa uh the Govaril the Gavarilis. The Gavarilis Daga the okay. I was on um priyatni chalavak on priyatni um honorafitsa needs to partner no it's this one next a menudo hablamos sobre el voleibol. Mi chasta cobrim o voleibol. Okay, and we are done. And mi chasta cobrim o voleibol. Mi chasta cobrim o voleibol. Oops. <laughs> okay, continue. I don't know why I cut that off. Voleibol. Uh, acción completada. Días, puntos de experiencia. Alcanzaste tu meta diario. I uh, reached my daily goal. Uh, super bono. Cinco puntos de experiencia. Hoy ganaste quince puntos de experiencia. Continuar. Ganaste uh, tres lingots. Pero haste todo y alcanzaste tu meta diario. You worked hard and achieved your daily goal. So three lingots today. I think those lingots are random. <laughs> Tienes una racha de mil novecientos uh, frente a dos días. Has avanzado mucho y um, you've progressed a lot. What does that mean? You've progressed a lot. You've achieved a lot. You've, yeah, you've progressed a lot, advanced a lot. Continuar. Okay, that's that one. So I have 60%. Next one's probably, I have two more on profesión for this Duolingo course. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I think, is I will switch this up and I will actually uh, do a little bit of um, stuff on Android, actually. We'll do a little bit of stuff on Android. I'll show you a few of the other apps. Um, a couple of the other language sites, they also have app versions. I'll show you those uh, other app versions on um, Closemaster, Manco Languages, uh, Monthly Languages, and Usu. 
that time we'll do the tiny cards and I'll show you uh, well sh you saw tiny cards on you saw the web version of tiny cards I showed you that didn't show you memorize um, I'll just skip that possibly for now come back to that actually before I do that I'll just quickly go to the memorize site because they said they were shutting down the decks.memorize site so let's go to docs dex.memorize.com and see what they did and <laughs> okay okay so they didn't oh, okay so they did shut it down it's been ported over back to Memorize and automatically went to Memorize.com. I see that. So let's just make sure to try again. Dex.Memorize.com. Yeah, it redirected. Okay. Um, so just go to Memorize.com and you'll get your uh, courses are back there. All right. Okay. It doesn't look like they paywalled anything. Some people are asking if they're going to paywall all the community courses, and I'm like, why give them ideas? Why, why, why give them ideas? If they didn't say they were going to do that, you just gave them the idea to do maybe do that, because then it, the reply was, oh well, we haven't, we haven't fully thought this out, and yeah, so now they got the idea. <coughs> anyway, so it doesn't look like it's being paywalled, and hopefully not because. Yeah, it was 14 days ago. So who, Jay Borrego. Mm. No, no, I don't want to search him as a topic. Jesus, I wanted to search his Nick. Thank you. I want to just search for more posts. Uh. Yeah, why do you give them ideas? Any ideas about monetizing user? Oh, okay, okay. Some people want to make some money with their courses. That's fine. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, anyways, so yes, Dex is gone, and we now have everything back on one site for memorize.com. Okay, you know what, while I'm here, I, I don't think I actually showed everyone, I think I showed how to use Boosu's website, um, I think I showed everyone how to use, uh, we did Close Master, showed everyone how to use Close Master, Mango Languages, Mondly, I'm sure I showed everyone how to use Busu and Tiny Cards. So I haven't showed you, uh, showed you guys how to use Memrise's website. Uh, we'll just ignore that. I'll just leave that there for now. Um, anyways, it took me to the courses that I created. Um, this is a filter here. You can change that as you want. Now, the way this works is uh, you can you find a course and then you start it and you add it. I've these are courses I've created for my variant of Chinese, this is Thai Chinese. Um, there's also like Spanish, um, in the split up Spanish from Spain and Spanish from Mexico, Portuguese from Portugal. Um, I guess I don't have the Portuguese for uh, Brazilian Portuguese on here. I should, I didn't know they split that up actually. But the Chinese is also split up, um, there's Chinese. They mean Mandarin, a, a traditional Chinese and simplified Chinese. At one point, actually, Memorize switched in, called it Mandarin, and then they switched it back to Chinese because I guess a lot of people don't understand that. Some people might not still, to this day, might not understand that there's a difference in different Chinese uh, variants. I don't call them dialects or different languages. It's, oh, t it's too political to call them either. I call them variants of Chinese um, because like I said before in a previous stream, um, Mandarin to Cantonese is like French to Italian and 
Cantonese to my learned to of Chinese to Taishanese, Cantonese to Taishanese to me is like, is like going from Italian to Spanish. And those are considered separate languages. So technically the languages, they're considered separate languages when you've got a country <laughs> to claim it as a language. So let's just avoid that terminology. And from a linguistic perspective, you could possibly say Taishanese and Cantonese are dialects of each other. They're very similar, but they are not dialects of Mandarin at all. So anyone who tries to tell you that Cantonese is a dialect of Mandarin, no, it is not. Mandarin speakers, often Mandarin speakers will say they don't understand any Cantonese and they are very unlikely to understand um, my, ver my variant of Chinese, Taishanese. Um, but anyways, there's the Chinese and that means Mandarin Chinese with the simplified traditional characters. But they also do have Cantonese right up there. And they actually, somebody added in Taishanese. I don't know who added Taishanese to Memorize Course to Memorize Site, but it was added already. So I saw it there and decided to throw up some courses. They also have, I'm not, I don't have it myself actually. Let's just go over here, click on courses. They also have Hakka, um, which is a language spoken by some people who live in China, in southern China. Um, some people could, I, I, I guess some people consider it a form of Chinese. I'm not entirely sure on that because I haven't done a lot of research about Hakka. But they'll put it under Chinese anyways. So all Chinese, there's, like I said, there's the Mandarin, supply Mandarin, traditional. Um, Mandarin spoke, spoken only. If you only, if you don't want to learn the characters, there's spoken Mandarin. Cantonese, and Cantonese with Yutping that would be um, just the pronunciation for Cantonese. Uh, yeah, so the other ones, Aside from Taishanese, they added Ningbo dialect and Hakka. Okay, um, those are the different ones. Um, but they also, I didn't realize they had um, different Portuguese. Let's see, so we go to European and let's see, Portuguese. Um, I must be blind, you don't see it. Oh, there it is. Why is it? I don't know. This is some random order. I guess it's done by what's mo most popular. So I think the thing is, the European languages are pretty popular, but I think uh, Chinese overall, Mandarin Chinese overall, is pretty popular. Everyone wants to, people do want to learn Chinese, Japanese, and they kind of left, put these in that kind of order. So the European, Chinese, Japanese, Indi Indian languages, um, yeah, they're not all in the same family group as far as I can tell. I believe, um, actually I'm, not, I'm trying to remember if they're all in the same family group. I don't believe they are. I think Tamil, Bengali, are not the same as Hindi. Uh, I could be wrong. I think, I don't know, I don't know if that's pronounced like Canada or Kanada. Um, some of these are not, but anyways, they, they've done it this way. And the way they've organized it is more about geography than it is about linguistic category. So, um, so here's the Asian and Pacific, right? You got Hawaiian, Tha Korean, Thai, Vietnamese. Um, I mean, Chinese and Japanese are Asian, but because they're, I guess because they're so popular, they kept them separately. And also, I guess it depends how many courses are in those categories. Then there's Middle Eastern, um, and there's just Slavic, there's the Russian. Um, African languages, again, are not necessarily in the same linguistic family. This is all just geographical. Native American, uh, Inuktata is there, actually. Um, and uh, so is Greenlandic. Uh, I wouldn't call them Native American because they don't use that term in those places. Uh, Canada does not call them um, Native Americans. They're either First Nations, Inuit, or Métis. Um, but anyways, there's Cherokee. Um, there's classic languages. There's Latin Greek, constructed languages. I guess people like their Esperanto, uh, Klingon. Uh, Morse code is uh, important, I think. And your sign languages. You got your different sign languages. Ah, see, now that I'm in Europe, I'm like, uh, I, I don't know Dutch sign language. <laughs> I think, I think if you're thinking internationally, Morse code's probably best. <laughs> uh, 
best to learn Morse code, I think, if you want to be have an international language that doesn't depend, like, like it's so good. Well, I guess it wouldn't be good as a sign language because it's. But actually, Morse code can be done without sound. You can use it with lights, so you can do Morse code with lights or sound. So actually, yeah, if someone's deaf, um, if someone's deaf, you can use Morse code with signals with flashing lights to send a message. And you know, if somebody can't see and is good with the audio, you can use Morse code as an audio. They use the audio coding, the audio method. So yes, Morse code would be a very good. I guess as an international language, I think, honestly. And I did go through that course. Uh, yeah, I did go through that course to learn the Morse code. Um, is there another one that was more complicated? I think there was another more complicated Morse code that required a lot more listening. Uh, and there's other. And then they also, aside from languages, they also have these kind of categories. Uh, history and geography. Geography is pretty good. Um, they have the maps on them. And anyway, so that is all the categories. Yeah, see it is divided by top categories. Oops. Uh, no, this is top categories and all categories. So you've got French, Spanish, Japanese, German, Korean, Chinese, Spanish, Italian. And also, I guess, computers and engineering seems to be popular in here. Go figure. Uh, they also, you can also probably find as, um, astronomy. Um, if you want to learn your constellations for fun, and you also have anatomy, um, which will help. And some people have done nice anatomy courses with pictures. So anyway, so here's the, those are the courses. I know they added Brazilian Portuguese, so I don't think I added a course from there. I'm not sure which one I would add. So let's just check this out. Brazilian. Oh, because they added their own. That's why. This is this is the course by memorized. Brazilian, Brazilian, Brazilian. Okay, there's some here. Yeah, intermediate. See, there's the created course, uh, user created courses. Um, those are <laughs> Duolingo, Brazilian, Portuguese. Let me put that on there. Yeah, these are actually interesting. They might be maybe later. So let's see. We've got. I've got both Spanish. I don't have both Portuguese yet. Um, I'll add one just so I can have that category on there. Um, basic Brazilian and Portuguese. Oh, Ben Watley was the one who was actually, he was one of the original people involved with numbers. I don't know if he's still around. Yeah, that is his basic and he created a lot of basic courses for different languages, but then memorized this how to do thing. Maybe he left, and maybe that's why I got all screwed up. So there's, so we can click on that. It tells you how many people are actually joined that course and approximately how, how many hours it will take. So you can add that. I guess if you, uh, I think I, I would add it to my thing already. Um, Anyways, so I'll go back to home and see if that added it to, to my thing or not. Maybe not. But I'll have to go do it some other time. Anyways, so like I said, um, memorize courses are they're basically like flashcards, but you have to type in your answers usually or tap your answers in, and um, there is a timer, so you have to be um, well, you don't have to rush, but you have to uh, try to get your answer right within the amount of time. So. I, this is one of my Taishanese courses, which I will go through. Um, so you click on that, and you can see the overview of the course. So these are the different lessons. Uh, well, they, I guess they call them levels, actually. There's eight levels. These are the different levels. And I actually don't have any... Oh, no, I do have review. Let's speed review. Yeah, you need a... I, think, I believe you need a subscription to do this. Um, if you had difficult words marked, but you can unmark them at the end of your lesson. If any are marked with a with a lightning bolt, you can unmark them so they don't go there. You need a sus subscription to do that. Now, uh, so I'll just do a review here, just to show quickly how to do this. Let's click on this first level. Yeah, there's 23 words to review, so I'll, so I'll click on review and. This one, I believe, is just tapping. Uh, Fire Mountain is that one. You can also type in the numbers. 
Just be careful you don't type the wrong number, like I was about to. <laughs> and sorry, I do not have audio for these. But you can see the timer ticking down in the top right. And I have the pronunciation popping up. Uh, uh, the correct one for Sky is uh, Hin. Uh, the pronunciation for my, this is all Taishanese Thai pronunciation. Cal is uh, now and Moon Month um, Nut. And Heaven Above, uh, Hin Sing. Workman, Gung Yin. Buffalo water ox, uh, soy ngao. Okay, uh, down below ha. It's actually a falling tone. Uh, big is uh, dai. Oh, I, sorry, dai. I'm thinking Cantonese now all of a sudden. Uh, nit. Uh, po. Po. Uh, chong. Dong and water soy. Hand is siu. Sailor uh, soy siu. Uh, there we go. Soy siu. Person is nin. And that's a low tone. Uh, lamb, sheep, goat is uh, yen. And that's also a low tone. Goat, mountain, sheep, uh, mountain, sun, yang. And mountain is sun. It's an even tone, a middle tone. Mouth is how. It's a high tone. Uh, so Taishanese actually does not have as many tones as Cantonese. Um, Standard, uh, standard Cantonese outside of Hong Kong has seven tones. Um, Hong Kongese um, kind of morphs two of the two high tones together. Um, so there's a high tone in standard Cantonese and then there's um, is a high falling. I think it's a high falling. I can't remember. High rising? No, there's mid rising, low rising, mid rising. High, mid, low, low rising, mid rising, mid falling. I think there's a high falling tone in Cantonese and uh, Hong Kongese, they, they don't really make a distinction between a high falling tone and a high tone. Um, so yeah, I got those all right and you can see this and like I said, this is the uh, thing so we, you can uncheck those and click next. And that's basically it. Um, I can show you a text one, but I'm going to be typing. Okay, so that's just just to show the characters and what they mean in English. This part is uh, the Taishanese pronunciation and what they mean in English. And then, and again, there's no typing in that one because I don't believe in typing English as an uh, with, with Memorize, some people wanted the courses where, like for something like Russian, instead of trying to type in their answer in, in Russian, they wanted to type in the English answers. I just don't like that because I don't need to practice my English typing and a lot of times you'll get things wrong on Memorize just by mistyping your English by accident and you actually do know the answer. So, so I don't do that with my courses. Um, and characters to Taishanese, so again there's no typing in this one, there's the character and there's the pronunciation so then now you can match the character to pronunciation and then the one that has typing oh i also did cantonese on here but it shouldn't be there i should really it's too late i already put those on there and um this was before when they just had a, like a chinese category so i put them in under chinese as just the characters chinese traditional but they made then they made it clear that chinese traditional is only supposed to be mandarin um, or something, and then I, I just threw this into my Taishanese then. 
Actually, there's no typing in this course in particular, so I'll have to go to one of my other ones. And no, go back to home. Now, when you change your filter, you'll change what you see on your home. So my very first, uh, aside from that, this is the uh, first Taishanese course I put together. And so, um, well, we'll do that. That one's simple. We'll practice uh, numbers 1 to 10, and we'll do the typing for that. And there's only 10 words in here, so it should be fairly easy. And as long as my uh, Kangja keyboard works, I should be okay. Uh, that can G3. That should work fine. Um, so review 10 words. This is how you do your typing. And it's my Kangja keyboard. Uh, press enter. Press space bar to select the uh, character and enter to enter your answer. And there's a timer in the top right. And hi. This means six. Uh, this is K. That means nine. And unfortunately, I can't have both the English and the pronunciation show up. So I have to pick one over the other. Um, and that's done. I did the 10. So that's how you do uh, memorize. Mm, there we go. Well, some people actually are doing my course this week. That's funny. That's actually kind of funny. <laughs> and yes, I completed my own course, so. Wow, I'm actually surprised. There's someone here who. Uh, Looks like they probably completed my uh, Taishanese course on here. They got like two million, almost the same, or two million points like I do on my own course. That's cool. Um, okay, so that's that's memorized and that's how it works. And and so actually, I will take a break and. And I will be back later. Hopefully I will be back later and I will show you some of these the app versions of some of these other websites. Uh Close Master, Mega Languages, Mondry Languages, Busu, Tiny Cards, and Memorize. So let's see you soon.